Hi there. Today it's time for a short lesson about diamond problems. I know these pop up in my classroom and I've noticed that they uh, pop up in other classrooms too, in other schools all over the place. So let's check these out. Uh, diamond problems, they're kind of like a puzzle, but there's a bigger meaning behind them and they go on to uh, being important in algebra concepts. And uh, later on, they become part of the uh, quadratic formula and all that. So let's get a basic understanding going first. I think the best way to learn about these is to look at some that are already done. Now, these are ugly, okay? I get that. So these are the ugliest looking diamond problems you'll ever see, but they've got everything you need. Look at these completed ones and see if you notice any patterns that are happening in all of them. What patterns do you see happening here? Hopefully what you noticed is, especially in these first two, you notice that, hey, three and four, when I add them together, it equals seven, right? Seven is the sum of three and four. And at the same time, you may have noticed also that three times four, when I multiply the two numbers on the side, that gives me their product. The product goes on the top, that's the 12. Let's see if this pattern holds for all of these other ones. And if it does, then we've got ourselves a rule or an algorithm, right? A set way of doing things. I'll say a set way of performing operations. Okay, a system, if you will, that you can trust and use every time. Is 13 the sum of five and eight? Yes, it is, since we're adding them. And when we multiply, you get the idea. I don't need to go through all four of these for you to get where I'm going with this, which is the product goes on top, the sum goes on the bottom. Now, if we want to uh, put this in a generic way, what we could do is this. And by the way, even though they're called diamond problems, as you can tell, I'm horrible at drawing the diamonds. Maybe you are too. I've seen students in my classroom struggle with this. They look like kites or other weird shapes. So as long as you put an X there, you can take care of business, okay? There's no reason to spend a lot of time drawing diamonds unless you're in art class or you're a jeweler, okay? But if I call the number on the left X and the number on the right, if I call that Y, then what goes on top? XY, right? The product x times y. And so on the bottom we have x plus y. So there's our generic form of diamond problems. Okay. Now there's four different ways you can be served up diamond problems when they come out of a textbook or a worksheet or something. Let me show you those four possible options once my zooming gets under control here. Okay, here's some samples. I'm going to give you the problems in uh, black, and then we'll go through and put the answers in red. Okay, since I'm just going to be doing X's, this won't take nearly as long. Okay, you love this kind. This we call the easy kind. It's pretty straightforward. It's just like our examples on top. Then we have a couple of ways we can get what I call the medium ones. They're the two-step problems. Okay, that might look something like this, where you have one of the side numbers. In this case, we have the X and we have the product. Or as you could guess, you might have one of the side numbers and the sum at the bottom. Okay, so that kind of fits into that category of those are two-step problems. And finally, this would be the most challenging type of diamond problem. This is your tough one. And that's where you're given the product and the sum, but not the basic factors or add-ins there. Okay, so let's break these down. First of all, on the easy one, well, you just do what we learned at the top. You do x times y, right? So the answer is 10 up there. That's our product. And we add them at the bottom. Easy enough, okay? No big deal. Now, when we go to the medium, this is where we're going to have two steps, okay? We're going to have to use inverse operations. 
which just means working backwards. What I mean by that is if I have a product up here, which means I multiplied to get the answer, if I want to get this answer, I need to divide. Okay, so I'm going to take my product of 24, I'm going to divide by the 6, which is going to give me the 4 that goes over here. Now I have to do that first if I have the product on top, because I can't just throw a sum down here on the bottom without knowing what the two numbers are in the middle. Okay, so step one, if you see a diamond problem that looks like this as the product on top, step one is divide. And then step two is add. Six plus four is 10. Okay, now this one here, we've got the sum on the bottom, which means you added to get there. So what is that inverse operation? Right, it's subtraction. So on this one, step one is going to be subtract. In this case, we're going to do nine minus seven equals two. That gives us that. And then obviously I can do the two times seven to get 14. Okay, so on the medium ones, that's where you have one of the side numbers and either the product or the sum. And you're gonna use inverse operations to figure out the other number on the side and then you'll complete the missing number like I did in red. And finally, the tough one, this is where you might actually have to, I know, I hate to do this. You might actually have to use a guess and check kind of a strategy. Later on, we can learn that there's a mathematical way of breaking this down so you don't have to guess at all. But for this time, we need to get our basic facts down to the point where you could do this. So for example, if I start with uh, 15 and one, those are two factors of 15, and then I test them out by adding. Is 15 plus one equal eight? No. So I move on to the next one. What's, what are the next factors? I can go uh, five times three. That also gives me 15 on the top. Do those add up to eight? Yes. Once I get the answer of yes, I fill in those numbers and we're done. So sometimes the tough one might take the longest. And something else I want you to notice here is throughout all these examples, I only used positive numbers. Okay. So I'm going to make another video talking about how to deal with negatives and some different strategies you can use. But the bottom line is it's all going to be the same, no matter how tough it might look later on in algebra, doing the quadratic formula, stuff like that. It's all the same, right? We've got a product on top, some on the bottom. And by having this generic version here with X's and Y's, we can apply this to all kinds of different situations. This is your basic level one lesson. And I recommend you check out my next video, which will have some practice problems on it and some different strategies for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.